Hello, everyone. This is Life Questions, a program that takes a look at life's many issues from a biblical point of view. And I'm your host, Bill Harris. Your viewer questions about life help fuel our discussions here on this program, along with the expertise of local pastors, some of whom have joined us today. And I'd like to introduce them to you at this time. We are joined by Pastor Jim Lewis of the New Life Christian Ministries here in Lima, Ohio, along with Pastor Darwin Dunton of Mount Tabor Church of God in Salina, Ohio. Also with us today, Pastor Craig Fleck of the Salina First Church of God, and rounding up our panel, Pastor Jason Goss of Wapakoneta Family Worship Center. Tim, we're happy to have you all with us today. Thanks for us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. you know, we had such a spirited discussion last week. I hope we can um, even top it today. <laughs> <laughs> There's a question that has come in from our viewers about anxiety. Question asking specifically, is anxiety a sin? And I think, you know, a little bit of definition might be in order. We tend to worry about today, but we have anxiety about tomorrow, something that we have, have no control over, can't get our arms around to, to bend things into our, our way of doing things. What do you think about anxiety? Is it, is it really a sin? Um, a lot of people are, particularly in this COVID society now, are mm -hmm. struggling with anxiety, not knowing what their own personal future is going to be like. I, I have a son who, uh, when he goes to take a text, test, he, he is, gets anxious. It's just, it's a chemical in his system. He can't necessarily control it. And so there is a, I guess, a side of it that, it, hey, some of it is not necessarily just you can control it. So some of it is beyond your control. So would that be a sin? No. However, I would say if anxiety controls your life, that would be considered sinful because then you're replacing who should control your life, Christ. Mm -hmm. And so is anxiety a sin? No, but if anxiety dictates how you live, what you do, then I would, I would say there might be a question there. Very good. I think that's great, by the way. You know, I, the Bible talks about in First Peter, and I think if you read it in the NIV, it actually says to cast your anxiety. Yep. Yeah. Ah. Right, so back to pastor's point there, it's like, what are you doing with your anxiety? It's going to come. It doesn't say that having anxiety is a sin, but I think in the moment, what do we do with it? Yeah. Are we living in that anxiety? Because if we live in that, then that's fueling us, right? The Bible right. says that it's in Him that we live, that we move, and that we have our being. So if yeah. we're doing that, then even though when anxiety comes, whether it be with the test uh, or whatever, like, hey, okay, God, I'm feeling this way right now, but here it is. I'm casting it upon you, yeah. and it's yours. You know, I've been to Israel on a few occasions, and one of the places I always make sure I visit is the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that Jesus was dealing with anxiety yeah. when he was yeah. in that garden. I mean, I like to go because I can relate in that, in right. that garden there. Right. Yeah, that's one of the most dangerous prayers in all the Bible is not my will, but yours. Wow. And if yeah. you actually mean that, yeah. that yeah. means I have anxiety about what's coming. But I mean, that, that's what you were saying, Jim, is to then cast it. That's what Jesus is doing there. He's yeah. giving his anxiety over to the Lord. Of, right. If there's another play, if there's another way, I know this mm -hmm. is coming mm -hmm. my way. Mm -hmm. Please, if I cannot drink from this cup, yeah. but yeah. not my will, yeah. but yours. Yeah. And so I think that's where he's giving, we see that act of Christ giving over his anxiety to him rather than walking out his anxiety. And yeah. it, cause then his, his demeanor changes. He doesn't have Peter fight the guard. He, he doesn't fight him off. He doesn't get combative with Pilate. He doesn't call on the angels who he are standing yeah, by. Right. Right. So you almost can see some of that, that anxiety has been given over to the Lord and now he's gonna walk out what God has for him. Mm -hmm. even just moments before sweating blood. Yeah. And you know, it, it is said too that the anxiety wasn't quite so much about his own physical suffering mm -hmm. as it was about the fact that for the first time in all of eternity, he would be separated from his father. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because when he got up on that cross, he became sin. Mm -hmm. yeah. he, he became our sins. Yeah. God is offended by sin. And so when God turned his back on him, that's what brought out the cry from the Lord, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Yes. God turned his back on his own son for you and me. And Jesus had never experienced being separated mm -hmm. from his father. That, that produces anxiety. What, what makes anxiety among us? What, what would we say? Hey, talk about this one thing, I get anxiety over this, or I get anxiety mm -hmm. over that. You know? <laughs> I was gonna say when I get that phone call <laughs> as a pastor, it's like, okay, what's going on today? Yeah. What are we gonna talk about? 
You know, anxiety is is not always a negative thing. Yeah. I mean, anxiety can uh, is also. Um, I mean, if, if I'm in a war situation and the enemy's coming at me, I'm going to be anxious. Yeah. Okay, it's going to cause me to protect myself. Yeah. I go to Cedar Point or Kings Island, and I'm going to go on that roller coaster. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to be anxious. Yeah. And you see all these people, oh, like this, when they get on the roller coaster and they get off, oh, that's great, you know, let's do it again. And they get anxious again. But you're right, does it control you? And, uh, you know, and I get that phone call, I got to meet with that parishioner, I got to do this thing I just don't want to do because I know it's, it's gonna turn out bad, it's gonna be a bad situation, whatever else. So uh, a lot of times what I will do, I mean, I, I think of um, uh, Philippians chapter four, it says be anxious for, for nothing, right? but also they go further and they give the formula on how to combat it. There you go. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, prayer, supplication, supplication yep. thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Sounds like a prescription. Right. It is. I mean, it, it's right there. And so when, when it's controlling you, I guess the question I have to ask is, is okay, where's your prayer life? Hmm. Yeah. Right. A lot of times when you're anxious, you, you move away from that stuff. Well, and think of how much, uh, you know, you get the, the cancer diagnosis or we've all worried about COVID at different points mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and instead of going to God in prayer with it, we're... Googling symptoms, or yeah. we're, we're and, and, and you, so you start to worry about that kind of thing, and, and you spend more time panicking rather than in that prayer, and specifically in Philippians, with thanksgiving, finding things to yeah. give thanks to God of how he's yeah. seen you through seasons of anxiety and stuff. But yeah, that's, that's spot on, is where is your prayer life? Where is your heart? See, my wife had a brain tumor. Is that right? A number of years ago. And we went to Cleveland Clinic, and then it was the size of a golf ball on the brain stem. And, and I remember our church was praying, we were praying, and I mean, we had people all over the, the nation that were praying for her, and, but she still had to go through it. Yes. But I remember that one time when I was praying, and I felt God, the Holy Spirit, just say, you're done praying. You're done. Mm -hmm. I've mm -hmm. got this. Mm -hmm. And then I could feel the prayers. I literally felt the mm -hmm. prayers of mm -hmm. everybody going mm -hmm. up on my behalf. And, you know what? and it's going to sound crazy, but I didn't pray the rest of the time because I was done. I couldn't. Mm -hmm. I understand that. And everyone else was praying on my yeah. behalf. The Jethro's holding up, awesome. the, yeah. holding up the arms. There you yeah. go. Yeah. And, you know, she went through the brain surgery. Uh, she, she's 95% normal. Um, and does it still affect her? Yeah. But our peace was right. in him. Yeah. I think this question, too, you could apply a lot of emotions that we go through in that same category. Yeah. Anger, yeah. not a sin, unless it controls you. There you go. And so there are some things that it's not a sin to have those emotions, but the moment they control you, the moment they take over your life, the moment they consume you, I think you can go back to Philippians and say, you know, it's not just anxiety we're talking about here, but when those things, you should be praying. You need to, to put, send some thanksgiving before God. Uh, that allows you that ability to say, okay, my, my trust, right. my hope mm -hmm. is not in the situation, it's in him. And mm -hmm. I have to also bring this, because this is very important. What are you feeding your mind yeah. through this whole time? I have not watched the news <laughs> since June. I was done. Yeah. I mean, I noticed my Facebook posts, everything was negative, yeah. angry, and everything else. And I was done. I have not watched it since June. And man, I feel so much better. <laughs> and you go in, you go into these people's homes, and they've got Fox News on because we're from Mercer County. They got Fox <laughs> News on, right. and that's they're feeding themselves 24 hours of this stuff. Why aren't they? Well, you want to know why they're anxious? Turn it off. It goes back. That goes back to a principle we just used on Sunday, which whatever you feed grows, and whatever you starve dies. Yeah. If you're feeding your anxiety, mm -hmm. you're feeding your worry, you're feeding your anger you're only going to let it grow. Yeah. And yeah. if you put, redirect that into Christ, into the Word, that's going to grow and the other things will, will start. You, you touched on something that I, I thought about, the, the anger that is being displayed in our society for various reasons nowadays. And quickly in my mind, I went back to when Cain was about to slay his brother Abel. Mm -hmm. And God personally counseled him and he said, why are you so dejected? Why are you so depressed? 
all you have to do is go back and make another sacrifice, and I'll accept that one. He says, but if you don't, he says, sin's lying at the door, and it will get you right. because you have to learn to master it. And it, it seems as though he, he, Cain is in the face of Almighty God, but God is telling him there's something that you have to do about this as well. Mm -hmm. It's just not me. Mm -hmm. I'll accept it if you bring the sacrifice right. Uh, anything to be said about the fact that very often we're throwing off our anger on others without facing our own responsibilities and Amen. controlling yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know? I'm not casting my cares upon God. I'm taking my anger out and my anxiety out on everyone else. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. the Facebook keyboard warrior. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, okay, so we've covered that about, about, about sufficiently about anger. Well, well, we did have another question or two about that, though. Why, oh, the question simply was, why are so many people unhappy? And how is happiness different from joy, that particularly? Would you say that happiness is contingent upon circumstances? Absolutely. And joy is more eternal or what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what you say? Or even an attitude. I mean, certainly eternal. I mean, as Christians, we think of that, that our joy is in the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. But I think happiness, and we all get caught up in that, so we're not uh, void of that as Christians. Like, we can get sucked in when we're on Facebook of getting drawn in, and all of a sudden, you know, that draws us into being unhappy, right? Because people are disagreeing with us or that or so, but we're sucked in. But it's that point of, like where really is the root yeah. mm -hmm. of our happiness or joy, however you want to use the word. But as Christians, when our joy is in the Lord, we can go through incredible things. Mm -hmm. Like Pastor was just talking about a minute ago where somebody is, he gets diagnosed with cancer, but at the same time, you see this weird, peaceful presence on their face and they're like, how do you do that? And maybe he could speak more to that. You know, how, did, how does that happen, you know? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that's the joy of the Lord because there's, there's an anchor that holds you as Christians, right? Yeah. When you think about how much stuff we spend our day, we get upset about uh, the little stuff that don't, doesn't make us happy. And when you get that cancer diagnosis, you know what doesn't matter? That the guy rode your uh, bumper on the way to work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know that Christ died for you and more than that lives for you. Changes your perspective on what made you happy or sad yeah. or gives you joy. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I'm trying to teach my church is this is not our home. Eternity is our home. Yeah. Right. And I think every one of us has had a parishioner that's dying of cancer, and I'm thinking of one right now, when I was talking to her about, you know, you're gonna be dying and everything else, and she stopped, she smiled, and she goes, but I'm gonna see Jesus. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And I go, whoa, man, you wow. taught me something there. I'm gonna see Jesus wow. soon. Let's hold it there. We need to take a break, but I'd like to continue on this vein when we come back. Stay with us, everybody. We'll be right back right after this. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back. We're talking about happiness versus joy, the joy of the Lord. What were you about to say before we went to break? Ha happiness is based on happenstance. That's kind of the definition of the term. So it's the situation where joy is based on who God is. You know, rejoice in the Lord always. always. And so even through trials, rejoice. James talks about that. So it's easy for you in a situation when you have joy, no matter the outcome, I can still be joyful. However, I may not be happy. Mm -hmm. I may not like it. I may not, I may not, but I could still, I, I've done, and I know you guys, you've done a funeral for someone who has uh, served Christ their whole life and you know where they're going. There's a different attitude than sure. when you do a funeral for someone who has no eternal hope. Mm -hmm. the, the attitude, the atmosphere, it's completely different. Yeah. And it's because there's no joy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think there's a, there's a thing there too. If, if we have folks uh, around us that say, you know, pastor or friend, I'm just not happy. All of us, when we start marriage counseling, sure. the first thing a couple usually says is, why are we here? I'm not happy. 
And there can be a subtle belief that if I'm not happy, then God doesn't want me in that spot. And that's essentially what they're saying is because yeah. I'm not happy, now divorce is warranted. And, mm -hmm. and of course, there's all sorts of shades of gray there. But the one thing we need to recognize as believers is God can very much lead us to a place and leave us in a place where we are very unhappy. Yeah. Oh, he's right. certainly done it in and, the past. And, and so when, when Jesus says, and we were talking about this earlier, uh, you know, if you want to be my disciple, you'll pick up your cross and follow me. Mm -hmm. yeah. The act of cross carrying is not going to be a happy no. thing. Right. And so I, I, that's where I think we can give people that encouragement that sometimes it's easy to say the, well, if God brought me to this place, he, he's left me or he would certainly want me to move. But it is a uh, perhaps bold, but I'm sure you guys would agree that God's primary concern is not our happiness. Of course, the pastor's the old saying, but is our holiness. Right. And, and so there is that recognition of like, don't just throw in the towel because you're not happy. Mm -hmm. Don't just, you might, and I'm not saying happiness isn't a bad thing. I love playing catch in the backyard with my kids. It makes me happy. Sure. But it's not my primary driver. Well, mm -hmm. I think too that we, as a society, as a culture, we see this in the riots, we see this in a lot of things. We have let our feelings dictate our lives and control our lives. Where scripturally, you don't see that Christ is, your faith should drive you. Well, if I let my feelings drive me, well then when I wake up in the morning and I roll over and look at my wife, I don't feel like loving her. Does that mean I don't? Or I don't feel like going to church on Sunday. Does that mean I don't? No, I do those things because I made a commitment, I made a vow, I know that's right. And when I do those things, my feelings will follow. Yeah. But too many times we've, we've allowed our feelings to, in, a, in essence, control our faith. That's when it should be our faith yeah. that's controlling our feelings. Feelings make something? a great caboose on the train. Absolutely. Don't let them pull. <laughs> right. yep. They should be there. They're a part of the train. Right. right. Sure. But Nothing wrong with them. Let them follow. Yeah. <laughs> See, we, we, I like that. We are the only nation in the world that has in its purpose statement the pursuit of happiness. I mean, that's our purpose statement. It's in the Constitution. Yeah. Right. Our purpose yeah. is the pursuit. Declaration of Independence. Yeah. Yeah. Well, whatever one it is. <laughs> I'm a history major, my history. man. I'm sorry. It. But, it is, but it's in, in one of the documents, okay? <laughs> but, um, but that is there. That's yeah. our purpose statement is to pursue happiness. And what we're finding out, you can't find it. Yeah. yeah. It's a, <laughs> you, because it's a byproduct, right? It's a byproduct. And we're seeing that uh, a pastor, I was telling you before, a pastor made the comment. He says, what we're seeing in the riots is this generation that grew up with the pursuit of happiness and they've done everything there is to be happy and there's nothing to be happy anymore. Mm. Yep. And so now they're trying to find it. So let's break a window. Let's do this. <laughs> let's, and, 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 and they're still not finding it. Yeah. Somebody is amazing. Is there's still a lot of unhappiness in the church. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, he brought it up when you go to counseling, well, I'm not happy. And there's just, you know, and the divorce rate statistically is near the same as it in the church as it in the world. And so, this is just speaking to volumes. And so the something that's I'm thinking of right now as pastors, like, what are we doing? Like, what should we be doing? It's, it's challenging me personally, just sitting here talking about this with you guys. Like, what are we doing? Like, with this life question, like, all this unhappiness is in the church, but shouldn't the church be the place where there is so much joy in the midst of trials and adversity that it becomes an example to the mm -hmm. world that the world wants to rush in mm -hmm. to be that place but now all of a sudden it seems like the world is hesitant to rush is it because of the a lack of joy i think one of the things that i found has brought the most joy in our body and i bet you guys would agree is fellowship yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so when a church forsakes fellowship and mm -hmm. covid by the way has killed it right. in a lot of ways sure, yeah. uh, we're sitting distance point. we're wearing yeah. masks we're not having potlucks our small group ministry is kind of disbanded for right now yeah um but that's where i feel like is the the secret sauce of acts 2 42 the breaking of bread and mm -hmm. and that kind of thing that that's the secret sauce of joy and if we just make church in a, an appointment that we go to or we don't you right. know on right. a sunday but you don't have community and, and different than friendship, but fellowship, that right. community of believers to walk with you through the highs and the lows, that's where, and then the byproduct of fellowship is a lot of happiness a lot right. of times. It's, it's fun being at the church potluck, maybe not for the kids all the time when mom and dad are talking, but right. it's fun being in life groups and small groups and that kind of thing. There's happiness that comes along with that, but I think that's a, that's a thing for pastors when we say, what are we missing sometimes? 
we're, we're thinking events, we're thinking programming. Right. We think, well, what they're missing is my next greatest sermon. <laughs> sometimes what they're really just missing is genuine friendship and fellowship. Yeah, yeah. See, we're seeing that in the COVID. We're oh, seeing yeah, that isolation. in the churches. And, and we were talking about a little bit before when we were together. I said, one of the things I'm noticing is, percentage-wise, the smaller churches are almost up to 90 to 100% back in attendance because it's the fellowship. The, the larger the churches, it's, it seems like statistically, it's lower the percentage coming back. I, I talked to a pastor out of Toledo. His church is 500. He's, he's now experiencing 20% of people coming back, wow. 20%. I think I talked to all of us, and we're running around 60, 70, 75 percent of where they, we were. And it just seems like the larger the church, the lower the percentage of those who are coming back in the COVID. Why is that? Fellowship. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's they the, feel connected with it, their people they before feel and they're coming back. I mean, we got a lot to learn from the small churches. Yeah. 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 And the family atmosphere. And the family yeah. atmosphere, yeah. definitely. So Somebody said fellowship is merely two fellows in the same ship. Yeah. <laughs> that's what, that's what it is. That'll yeah. preach. That's yeah. good. <laughs> that sure will. But um, let's, we, we, we've gotten into COVID a little bit here. Let me just ask you all, the issue about masks, still a big issue. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we, we see what it's doing in society. What is the mask, or how has the mask issue affected the church? Not just attendance, but just... It's caused a lot period. of division, division for us. Yeah. Uh, it per, not as much necessarily, say, on a Sunday morning. Uh, I think for some reason there's, the, there's a more aptitude to be deferential in love towards people on a Sunday. But we've got people, I mean, in the family, the fellowship, that have wildly different views that have taken to their keyboard warrior status mm -hmm. to fight it out. Um, but I, I've had people, and I've said this to a parishioner, if we make mass, I mean, letter of the law, you wear them or you don't step foot in this place, people are going to leave. Yep. And if we let people use their conscience or wear them when they come in, but take them off when they sit down, people are going to leave. And I was sharing with a, a friend of mine, I said, either way, I'm losing church right. members. Yeah. Yeah. And either yeah. way, they think I'm wrong and the other people. Yeah. Yeah. So it is just a divisive. Yeah. I haven't talked to one pastor that says, oh, we got that situation. <laughs> Div divisiveness, right. yeah. you know, yeah, kind of thing. Under control, no problem. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, seriously. When day one started with the, uh, with the churches coming back, uh, from day one, I made it very clear. I said, if me wearing a mask can bring somebody to Christ right. and make them feel comfortable in this church, mm -hmm. then I will wear it. And I, I hate them. I just despise them. I want to, it's nice to see your mouths. It really <laughs> is. And, but I wear them every Sunday when I'm greeting the people because I mm. want them to feel comfortable. And I think that's what Jesus would have done too. Well, Paul talks about that. Paul says that I will defer to the weaker yeah. among you right. so that may you, yeah. you might yes. grow. Right. And so yeah. there is that, hey, listen, if this is what helps us grow as a church, what's wrong with it? Mm -hmm. But then you also have the same side as, well, you're stepping on my fundamental rights. And I think that's where the, the division has come. Is it rebellion? Is it Maybe. rebellion? I, I, you can't tell me what to do. But as Christians, we have no rights. Mm -hmm. True. We've given them to Jesus. Our rights have been put on the altar and they're given to Christ. So How does that flesh out in society, though? Then Not I, well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am to display Christ to the society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Amen. really, to be honest with you, my rights are Jesus's. That's it. it I, think, uh, I think it's Craig Groeschel, who's the pastor of Life Church, says, We'll do anything short of sin if, it's what, if it means reaching people. Mm -hmm. If it means getting the gospel to people, if it means sharing hope with people, then we'll do whatever it takes. And I think that's a mentality that a lot of churches don't have. Well, mm -hmm. and that's why I, I, I've taken the same approach as Darren. I, I can't stand wearing a mask. I, no I haven't heard anyone say, don't mind it, but um, I, I'll wear one on a Sunday morning because I just don't. I don't want to be the stumbling block yeah. for someone. Yeah. And, and so I just will wear one, not when I'm preaching, but, but any time else, just because I don't want to be the reason. And that's where I've encouraged some of my people think through that. Um, but again, there's a lot of people that are wrestling with a lot of things right now. And when your spirit is amped up and you're already anxious, we find the one thing that we can control. And it's like, you're not, it's rebellion. You're not going to tell me this. And so if it was in a vacuum, I think most people would be like, oh, I could 
probably wear a mask if that's the only thing be- but it's all the other stuff right. that's come into it that I think has had people be like mm-hmm. it's it, it I can say no to that thing I think the other t- thing is a timetable is what do you mean I think people would be more accepting of it if you had hey listen we need to wear masks for the next two months people are like okay I can do that the problem is there's never been a and every time we do something the bar moves or we yeah. started church back out and there was no mask mandate. Right. So then we're changing the horse midstream. And so we had been back for months right. before the governor of Ohio changes the, mm. and so all of a sudden people are looking around and it's like, I've been sitting in that pew for eight weeks and you never asked me to do a thing and we haven't had any COVID outbreaks. We haven't, that yeah. was hard for people. I think, I well, think the rules the, did change. I mean, yeah, even, mid, even Dr. Fauci way. says that what they know now is far sure, greater than what they knew. But they never out. said that at the get go. If they had said, hey, listen, there's a lot of things we don't know. So we're going to try this. Hey, we want to flatten the curve. Okay, did we flatten the curve? Yes. But now what? Now they move the bar again. I think people want an explanation. And I think that's where the government side of it has kind of left the churches, left everybody else kind of questioning everything. Well, if we do this, what's next? Churches. If we do this, what are you going to do now? But yeah. let me also churches. just say that wearing a mask is not the mark of the beast. Right. So have you heard that? I've heard it's it's oh, leaning yeah. towards oh, yeah. it. Yeah. Leaning towards it, yeah. 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 It's not the mark of the beast. No, no. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm sure if a doctor was doing surgery on him, you're going to want him to wear a mask. Yeah. And you're not going to go, oh boy, you got the mark of the beast on you. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> I think back to Pastor's point, transparency in leadership uh, for me is, is an incredible value. And the thing is, is we look at the leaders in our government, whether it's the CDC, the right. president, or our governor, there hasn't been much transparency like what's wrong with just saying hey we don't know right this was a a, a newer thing for them oh yes but they 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 never said hey we just don't know but we want we feel like this is what we're gonna do and i feel like there would have been a lot more acceptance well Mm -hmm. think of that's what we learned i heard pastor language in there we never tell our people we are doing this what do we say we're gonna try this so that's the the old pastors hey because everyone freaks out if you get dogmatic but if you say we're going to try this. We're going to yeah. try best practices. We're yeah. going to walk in that. So there is some leadership there of like from the pastors who've had to work with folks yeah. day in, day out that we've kind of learned along the way. Right. Okay. Well, we've about out of time. Gentlemen, really appreciate all this fine conversation and certainly hope that it helps somebody out there. It yeah. is a blessing. We certainly hope, too, that you will send us, continue to send us your questions because a lot of this discussion is coming about because of viewers like you who've been doing just that. So be sure you send your questions to us. We'll be back again next week. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Have a great day. Have a safe day. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.